Oh, don't fight it with Steve Perry. Yeah. Um, how did that happen? Um, I had done a big outdoor festival with Journey, and that was the first time that I heard Journey and was blown away by his voice. And I thought, this is a great singer. And we kind of hung out a little bit after the show and said, let's get together and write together. I didn't know that he was planning on doing a solo album. Um, but I think that was his motivation to write with other people writers and get out of that box that he was in. And, um, and so he just came over to the house one day and we, we kicked things around and I said, you know, I want a rocker and I want something really simple because I tend to be, I tend to write complicated songs. And, uh, and so we just went mindless on it and kind of just, you know, where's, where's the groove, just play the groove and let's, let's sing the first thing that comes to our minds. My, 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 favorite memory from that process is being in the studio where Steve and I were both singing our lead vocals at the same time, which almost never happens. You usually send one guy in for a day and then you send the other guy in for a day. And um, so we're singing at the same time. And between takes, he's just riffing on voices that he somehow can magically do. And I remember all of a sudden he starts singing a Rod Stewart song and he sounds exactly like Rod Stewart. And, of, and then, of course, Sam Cooke, which is like his go-to. Um, one, one voice after another. He just had the ability to, to mimic all the rock greats. And then and, and plus, not just be a, a ventriloquist and make up, you know, sound like other people, but to actually create a voice of his own. That's, I think it stands out as one of the great voices of certainly of the 80s, if not all time. 